Now, scientists in the United States have found record-breaking ocean heat has triggered the fourth global mass bleaching event, which could see swathes of tropical reefs die. The US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which serves as the global monitoring authority on coral bleaching, warns the entirety of the southern hemisphere could potentially be at risk this year. Coral bleaching occurs when corals expel the colourful algae living in their tissues, causing them to become pale and vulnerable to starvation and disease. The results are often devastating to the ocean's ecosystem. For a bleaching event to be considered global, a certain percentage of reefs need to have undergone heat stress in three ocean basins, the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans. And the world's reefs have experienced three mass bleaching events in the past three decades. One in 1998, another in 2010 and a three-year episode from 2014 to 2017. Like this year's bleaching event, the last three also coincided with an El Nino climate pattern, which typically ushers in warmer sea temperatures. The world's largest coral reef, Australia's Great Barrier Reef, has experienced extensive coral bleaching across the marine park following seven localised bleaching events since 1998. Though coral reefs can regrow, the luxury of time without bleaching hasn't been afforded to the last two mass bleaching events. And to discuss these findings, I'm joined now by Dr. Derek Manzello, who is the Coral Reef Watch Coordinator with the US National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. Uh, good morning, Derek. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, we were just learning there about what the criteria for declaring a mass bleaching event is. How bad is this fourth global event? Well, currently, uh, more than 54% of the world's reef areas are have experienced bleaching level heat stress in the last year. So this is currently the second most spatially extensive global bleaching event on record. Now, this number peaked in 2017 during the third global bleaching event at 56% of the reef areas around the globe experiencing bleaching level heat stress. However, we are currently growing at a rate of about 1% per week. So it's likely that this event will become the most extensive large scale coral bleaching event uh, on record in as little as a few weeks. Mm. Uh, coral bleaching often makes news here in Australia. Can you just briefly remind us why it is so damaging long term to uh, tropical and coral reefs? Well, corals can recover from bleaching if the temperatures cool off quickly enough. However, if they're sustained for long periods of time or the, the anomaly of the temperature uh, is really great in magnitude, then corals can in fact die. However, what is known is that uh, even if corals are able to recover from bleaching, they have these long lasting physiological impacts. So corals uh, growth rates decline for about two to four years after they bleach. The reproductive output can be suppressed for upwards of five years. And in some cases, they become immunocompromised, which means they become more susceptible to diseases for one to two years. So if it takes five years for a coral to truly recover from a mass bleaching event, the fact that we're having bleaching events of this magnitude occur now you know, every few years, that basically means corals are gonna lose the ability to re even recover and be in a chronic state of stress. Hmm. Is there a part of the planet over the past year that has been worst affected by bleaching? Well, this particular global bleaching event has uh, severely impacted the Atlantic Ocean uh, hmm. in particular. Uh, the wider Caribbean region experienced record setting heat stress across pretty much everywhere. Um, last year, you could have picked a, a, a random spot in the Caribbean Sea in 2023 in the summer, jumped in the ocean and you would have seen coral bleaching. So. For whatever reason, the Atlantic Ocean appears to be bearing uh, the brunt of this event. Now, I, I don't mean to downplay the, the severity of the impacts that have happened around the world, in particular on the Great Barrier Reef. Now, we do know that this event, again, covered more spatial area than ever before, whereas, you know, this event, over 80% of the, of the uh, area of the Great Barrier Reef experienced bleaching level heat stress. And that's the highest that has ever occurred uh, uh, in history. But again, the anomalies in the Atlantic Ocean are really, really alarming. Um, and Brazil right now is experiencing a, a severe bleaching event, much like the Northern Hemisphere experienced 
in the Atlantic Ocean uh, last year. So mm. for whatever reason, this event, the heat stress severity is just off the charts in the Atlantic. And we're also seeing severe impacts now, you know, in the Indian Ocean as well as the, uh, the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Derek, you've been quoted uh, saying uh, that all is not yet lost. Uh, is there, what can be done in the short to medium term to save those reefs that have not been as badly affected yet? We really need more cutting edge science. You know, the, the, the order of magnitude of the research that's being done uh, should really be upped by one or two. And the reason I say that is because we know corals have some ability to adapt to, to higher temperatures. The question is, can they keep up with the rate of the warming and, and, the, and the pace that it's happening? You know, so we need to really be engaged in more cutting edge science, science to understand the genetic underpinnings of why certain coral species and certain individuals within species can tolerate heat stress better. And with that information, you know, it's been shown by our, our colleagues in Australia uh, that you can breed heat tolerance into future generations. However, we really need to be scaling up the, the, the magnitude of that research so we can try to keep pace with, with the scale of this problem. Um, and then the other big issue is, you know, restoration is always going to be um, hampered by the scalability, right? Mm. So even under the best efforts, our, our ability to restore reefs is going to be very, very limited in space. So the scale of the problem it outweighs uh, the ability of our, us to restore reefs by, you know, just an astronomical levels. All right. Uh, Derek Manzello from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Thank you so much for joining us on ABC News this morning. Thank you for having me.